First, I want to show you how I sort through some of my various pieces and lots of uh, Morganite rough. And then I'll show you the awesome piece of Morganite that I'm going to cut in this video. Okay, so this is pink Morganite, which is a barrel. We're gonna be, see what we can look at, look, see if we can look at a couple of these pieces and evaluate the quality of this rough. So these two pieces here are from Africa. And then they're, this is a what the trade calls a medium to dark pink, pink Morganite. It's not really dark. Morganite is generally light pink or peach. We're only gonna be looking at the peach ones right now. This one, this lot up here, these three pieces, also from Africa, described as pure pink. So when you buy Morganite, this is the color you're, you're gonna get. So when you evaluate rough, what you wanna do is you wanna look at the color, you wanna look at the size, the shape, how clean it is inside, um, check the clarity, and uh, then make make your decision. Uh, this piece of rough, for example, look kind of on the thin side. So it's going to be a problem. Uh, you, you, you're going to lose a lot of rough because you can't cut. You can't cut it this big because it's too thin. This one's got a very nice shade of pink as does this one. So in general, this is lighter than this. And I'm not sure you can see that in the camera or not. And this is fairly expensive rough. Uh, this is, but this is even more expensive, about three times. Now I did find a piece of rough that's very rare, Morganite. And, and I got one piece, uh, my a friend of mine from the Congo sells rough and he had a small lot a very pink rough and I was picking through it and he didn't want to sell it because he wanted to sell it by the lot he finally relented and let me have one piece and one piece only and I've never seen it this pink so here it is this is what I have one piece of pink morganite now these are very top quality morganite that, that you're gonna find available this is clearly much more saturated, much more vivid of a pink, even, even beats that one. So, and I got a pretty good price because I was buying it from the person that the gemstone dealer, rough dealer buy it from. So uh, this is fairly expensive. This is probably three times, this is three times as expensive as this. And this was probably eight times as expensive as this one so but it's going to cut a beautiful stone uh, once i figure out what to do with it problem is i can only cut one very pink very beautiful dark dark pink morganite now i also found a nice piece when i was at gym gym hunting uh, gym hunting at shows not gym hunting uh, in the mines uh, this is Morganite. This was a piece of rough that uh, one person was selling, and it's gigantic. It's lighter than these, so it's not as good of a pink, uh, even as this one. Again, this is top top quality, but this is pink Morganite, and uh, there's an inclusion in it, so it'll have to make. I have to cut it at least in half. That still makes two gigantic stones, so. Again, you evaluate the rough, you look at the, uh, the, see if there's inclusions. As best you can, this is fairly clean. These are both clean and this one's clean, so. So even within, within the gemstone that you're looking for, like Morganite, there's very different grades of pink. This is more pink than this. This is more pink than this. And this one is a very rare stone you're probably not going to find. Certainly not at any 
uh, jewelry store in the mall or, or where they where they have to find stones for 60 different stores in their chain and you're never going to find 60 of these good luck but that's the evaluating uh, gemstone rough okay so let's look at our piece of uh, pink morganite under refractol now refractol is uh, the same refractive index almost as quartz not barrel or uh, in this case morganite but it's close enough that we'll be able to see into our stone so when we put it in the refractol you can see very clearly into the stone this stone has a number of uh, inclusions but I'm going to cut one stone out of this um, it's just virtually impossible to find this color of morganite so I'm not going to try to trim out all these little inclusions or work around them I'm going to cut uh, one big piece, or the biggest that I can, uh, with this piece of morganite. And it'll be an included piece, but it'll be a very beautiful pink piece. So to clean off the uh, refractol, what I do is just uh, take the stone to the sink, use Dawn detergent, some kind of degreasing detergent, dishwashing detergent, and wash it off. So for a design, I selected the standard oblong step cut with cut corner design, which is a fairly standard design for emerald or rectangular shaped rough like this Morganite is. But then I ran this design through the Gem Cut Studio or GCS software, and I adjusted the angles for barrel or Morganite to enhance the brightness. Here are the angles and cutting instructions that I will use to cut this piece of Morganite. I previously prepared a tutorial on GCS showing how to optimize designs for gem material based on the refractive index, so I won't cover how to work with GCS in this video. But if you want to see how to use GCS, here's a link to the playlist of all my GCS tutorials and all the other GCS tutorials that I found on YouTube so you have them all in one place. Morganite is a member of the Beryl family uh, as are Emerald, Aquamarine, Heliodor, and Gorchonite. Nice family. By tweaking the design to cut Beryl or Morganite in GCS, I improved the brightness to about 65%. I did look at a couple of other emerald shaped designs, but this one seemed to give me the best ISO brightness. If you have a favorite design, which gives Morganite even more brightness at the face-up position, or if you have a different favorite rectangular or emerald-shaped design for barrel, please let us all know in the comments. Okay, for our unique piece of Morganite, what we want to do is put it in our spindle with the 96 index and have it be oriented this way. For the diagram so about like that and then we just tighten up the set screw and we're ready to start cutting our piece of morganite because this uh, morganite was already pretty much shaped like an emerald a rectangular shape um, in the rough I didn't have to do a lot of preforming so I just used my 320 grit uh, topper to kind of preform it up a bit I didn't worry about the corners yet, the cut corners. Those will cut fast and I'll, I'll cut those last. So now I'll start with the uh, 600 grit uh, solid steel lap and then my 12M. Okay, I went ahead and cut the corners of our Morganite in and uh, they cut and polished quickly. So I just used a, a 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap to cut in the uh, corner facets and then uh, polished them, went straight to polish. And so I'm ready to transfer the stone and start cutting the upper half. Okay, I finished polishing the crown of our uh, Morganite and uh, I used the uh, Spectrum Ultra Lap. So I used a really good pre-polish so that I just had to touch it a little bit with the Ultra Lap. Some people say the Ultra Lap's round corners because it's Mylar. But I find that if you have a good pre-polish and you're just touching it with the ultra laps, it's not the case. The corners, the facets are nice and crisp. So now I will uh, set the stone up to cut the table and polish the table and then we'll be done. 
Okay, so I finished polishing the table of our Morganite and now I'll soak it in acetone and weigh it, measure it, and send it off to Popey. It's turning out really, really nice color. Anxious to see what it looks like outside of the, uh, once we get the acetone and get the uh, two-part epoxy off of it. I took this finished gemstone with me to the Tucson Gem Shows this year, as I know that many of the gemological laboratories set up operations temporarily in Tucson for the duration of the shows. I had uh, AGL, which is the American Gemological Laboratories, examine this morganite for me. And here is the draft certificate. It will take a week or so before I get the official certificate from AGL. Uh, this gemstone tested out as natural morganite. Uh, this rare color of morganite was produced by the use of relatively low temperature heating process. There are no other clarity enhancements in this gemstone. Okay, now for the bad news. As I said, I just returned from the Tucson shows where several years ago I purchased this piece of morganite rough, uh, which has the best color for morganite that I've ever seen. Bad news is that uh, the rough dealer that I had purchased this morganite from was not in in Tucson this year. Also bad, his email address no longer works. Um, I searched all over the Tucson shows and I did not find this color of Morganite Rough anywhere in Tucson. Not sure if I will ever find a rough dealer with this color of morganite again, but I'll continue to look. At least I was able to cut this one morganite gemstone. Uh, this color of rough does exist. It's just rare and hard or almost impossible to find, but hey, I'll keep looking. Interestingly, I did show this gemstone in Tucson to one of the rough dealers uh, representing the Russian labs who produce uh, lab-created morganite. She recognized it immediately and told me that she has top quality lab-created morganite in a similar shade of pink to my natural morganite gemstone. She also told me that very often when she shows a customer her top color lab created morganite, they remark, no, that is too vivid of a color of a pink. Natural morganite doesn't come in that shade of a pink. And she told me that no matter how hard she tries to explain that natural morganite does exist in this shade, same shade as my natural morganite gemstone proves, uh, customers just won't believe her simply because they have never seen morganite in this shade of pink. Again, a very, very small percentage of natural morganite can be heated to this shade of pink, but again, it's rare. As far as the design, I have cut this design before. I still don't have a favorite design for a rectangular or emerald shape cut, but I do like this design a lot. I believe this design is suited suitable for any cutter of any skill level. A new cutter could even use this design to cut their very first stone. However, in my personal opinion, the first stone should be a standard round, round brilliant. But I do know gem cutter cutting instructors who do teach the standard round brilliant or SRB as not the first stone for a new cutter. So give it a try. As far as cutting morganite, I find all barrel to be very easy to cut and polish. However, as with virtually all rough, the cleaner the rough, the easier I find it to be to cut and polish. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, happy faceting, everyone.